A very good morning and a very warm welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mahavani. I hope you all are doing good. Today is 24th May and let's see what we have got in the Hindu today. But before that, like every day, a positive start. Nothing you wear is more important than your smile. Do you know this thing? If you want to give it a go to this thing, this is not motivation. This is a technology that I'm talking about. Before you wake up, when I say before you wake up, I mean to say that before you open your eyes or when you realize that you are awake, right? Just carry a smile. Even if it is a fake smile, just carry a smile for 15-20 minutes. The first time you see your face in your mirror, make sure that you are smiling. Before you go to bed, make sure you are smiling or laughing and you will see that your quality of sleep as well as when you wake up, your quality of day uh, will have a big drastic difference. You will feel more energetic, you will feel more positive and this, as I told you, is a technology. It's not just about motivation. If you give it a go to this thing for roughly say one week or 10 days then you will find for yourself that this is a very beautiful way to end and to start your day with this dear friends we have many important articles these two articles right this one is about environment this is about governor uh, i can say that what i know uh, based on this educational guess i can say this two are the most important topic that you find in today's the hindu and uh, there are high chances that you may find a question based on this topic direct or indirectly on these two topics right in your mains examination so make sure you pay attention to it i'm sure you are going to read this article once we have done with our discussion and uh, you can also save this article refer it and revise it uh, this uh, item here this editorial is about entirely preventable the things that are going on in tamil Nadu. it is about this protest and uh, how many people have been shot dead by police uh, yesterday i asked you a question you will find the answer for your question in this editorial it is talking about how uh, heavy handedness was used and snipers were deployed and things like that here this one is about uh, philip roth a very famous author who has passed away if you are preparing for ssc or bank exam you know that he, they ask you a question on uh, books uh, that are part of generally speaking part of current affairs so in international page of today's hindu you will find a picture in which you will get all important details about philip roth like his books and his awards and other things so uh, if you have to remember by heart it go for it because it will uh, give you one mark if you're preparing for banks and in upsc you don't find this type of questions then you have this three articles this is about justice and redemption black or black white or in between and this is about due process we'll go through it and then i will tell you what it is all about so let's move on but before that uh, a good news 50 percent discount is available on our pen drive and tablet courses now do you know that uh, our pen drive and tablet courses are designed and developed by the best faculties of our country so the quality that you get is going to be top of the range if you want to find out more about it check out studyiq.com any question or queries you can feel free and give us a call on the numbers that you can see on your screen you can download the PDF of today's lecture from my FB page or Twitter handle. May I request you guys to hit that like button if you have learned something from today's discussion. At the same time, you guys are brand ambassador of this lecture. You know the quality. So please do share this lecture with other people as well. Now let's start our discussion with this natural capital in the 21st century. Recently, World Bank came out with a report and in its report, World Bank has pointed out that India suffered a cost of $550 billion. Can you imagine this thing? $550 billion, uh, you can say, has gone wasted or we have suffered a cost of 8.5% uh, of GDP. By the way, $550 billion is equivalent to 8.5% of GDP just because of air pollution. Now, if we add noise pollution, if we add this water pollution, if we add land pollution, land degradation, uh, then this figure can go high i'm sure it will cross this double digit uh, it will be somewhere around 15 though this is just my assumption there are no evidence in my hand because there is no evidence uh, in our hand at all as a nation we don't know how much we are losing or how much it is costing us when uh, when we uh, calculate this uh, when this things like this water pollution and land degradation at the same time noise pollution something that we are not aware about that much but i believe we need a proper you know uh, rules and regulation or proper thing regarding this noise pollution because you know indian cities right all the time you hear uh, horns all the times and the sad thing is you hear people get this big loud horns they are literally if someone is blowing that horn 
this is something that happens with me right uh, if someone is constantly blowing of course i will not stop down and have a fight with that person but it is something that is very annoying i i'm sure you feel the same isn't it when somebody is blowing these big horns and just imagine how much it will impact the dogs out there in the street or cats or birds because they hear a bit better uh, higher than us isn't it so we never think about this sort of things anyways this is a very important statement or this line here that through commodity exports we effectively transfer natural capital to our trade trans, uh, trade partners dear friends uh, remember we have discussed about this thing this bri project belt and road initiative of china and i gave you this example that have this central asian countries right this china is building roads uh, that, uh, that are passing through this central asian region and uh, uh, china has leased uh, agriculture land and uh, what china is going to do or chinese companies are going to do is they are going to uh, use this land they are going to produce food items and this food items will be imported in china and by doing this china would not be using this precious uh, natural resource that is water it will be using water and land of other countries so in future you know if uh, there is land degradation or water pollution then it will happen with the central asian countries and not with china so when we export say for example a kilo of rice to australia just a hypothetical example then we are not just exporting that rice we are also sharing or we are giving away our natural resources we are giving a share of our soil we are giving a share of our water you know what i mean because all these things are required for the production of good quality of rice so when we export commodities right uh, we basically transfer this natural capital natural capital here you know it's water land uh, or soil and other things now the way things are going on in our country the way this pollution is going on we you we are using too much of chemical too much of water and other things we have talked about this thing many a times uh, that we are using like out of all this total water usage right if you if you break it down then you will find that uh, nearly 70 percent of uh, water usage out of say for example one liter of water that we have in our country 70 percent will be used for agriculture this is unsustainable isn't it the other thing is the way uh, things are going on within a century the food production of our country will be down somewhere between 10 to 40 percent so what happens when the food production goes down of course the price of food will go up then what will happen with the poor people they won't be able to afford it if i don't know whether we will have poor people living in our country within a century this is a big question again we can have a big debate and discussion on this thing but uh, let's imagine that we will have some poor people i don't want to see it but then as well let's take a hypothetical example that we will have some poor people in our country so what will happen is uh, uh, government has to provide them subsidies and there is no harm in it as well you have to support if you have poor people then it is not just a responsibility or it's not that uh, poor people are poor because they are lazy or they don't want to work it is also because they are not getting that equal opportunity and things like that anyways so government will have to provide them money and this money will be you know rather than using it for agriculture development of other things we have to diversify this money so it is going to be it's not going to be that healthy investment isn't it uh, it's going to be an expense rather than investment uh, i hope you are, i'm not giving out a wrong signal that we should not provide food to the poor people when i say investment and expense i mean to say that when we are trying to cure something you know uh, we are you can say that say for example if you are not looking after your health and if you get ill then the money that you spend you cannot say that you have invested in your health you have spent that thing or that's an expense for you but if you are looking after yourself very well right eating right food right sleep right work and workout and other things then if you are spending some money after fruits and workout and other things then that is your investment i hope things are clear to you now gdp right we all are somewhere you know we don't think about this thing and i am not saying that it's only happening with you students it's happening with me as well when i see this report uh, recently i was talking in this pib analysis that imf came out with its uh, prediction that uh, india's gdp will clock somewhere between se plus seven uh, somewhere between seven to seven point uh, five or something 
in in this year or next year then we feel happy about it uh, same thing happened with Fitch as well Fitch is a Finch or Fitch I don't know uh, can't remember it exactly but I think it's Finch so Finch is basically like just standards and poor or Moody's it's like a rating agency and it said something similar that uh, growth is going to be GDP expansion is going to be somewhere seven plus so we feel happy about it uh, politicians everyone is talking about this thing there is a a mood of cheer in our society this smile thing that we were talking about right people will have a smile because they know that they are going to make more money and things like that but do we think about uh, destruction of forest uh, do we think about how much we are going to damage now the more expansion of GDP the more natural capital we are going to use isn't it and the way we are using it we think that this natural capital when I say natural capital we are talking about fishes uh, we are talking about uh, forest uh, we are also talking about say for example uh, soil of course water air uh, you can add this overall hydrological cycle and uh, nutrient recycling pollination recently you know I provided you this pollination uh, thing uh, this bees how why we need to protect bees uh, there was this article in the back page of the Hindu and I told you about this bees they play a very good role or important role in this pollination then you have this nitrogen fixation and all these things right uh, there are other things as well they are all part of this natural capital and the way we are using it we think that they are constant and they will never they are in this indestructible but is it right of course we know that we are destroying them they are not constant uh, things have already changed and changed for a very bad thing uh, one more thing uh, a factual thing that one liter of polluted water when you release it in a river it will uh, destroy or pollute six liter of fresh water so you can imagine the way water the way we use water for example groundwater there are no rules and regulation we talked about this thing that uh, you if you have money you can go for a bore well and you can extract as much as water you like there is no one there to stop you at all and what happens when we face this sort of destruction the poorest of the poor the poor people they are the ones who suffer the most right they are the ones they are the first victim of all these things if the water gets polluted then they will get they will means they don't have access to these filters and other things though they will get drink polluted water then they have to spend more money in medical expenses their work will come down so they are the ones who are uh, the victim of the first victim and the biggest victim of all these pollutions that are going on pollutions because of development now uh, Ministry of uh, Statistics and Program Implementation released a report called Com uh, compendium of environment statistics 2013 just in case if you find an MCQ that uh, this report was released by which ministry or which body then it is this ministry that we have in our country Ministry of statistics and program implementation uh, this is the ministry that comes out with all these uh, reports right GDP and other things are released by this ministry uh, uh, as well so this uh, ministry came out with this report back in 2013 uh, it was decided somewhere around 2009 that we need to have this uh, sort of report and it came out in 2013 so this article basically is uh, the main gist here is that we need this type of reports if we have this type of reports as you know that now you know that because of air pollution we have cost uh, we have lost somewhere around 8.5 percent of our GDP so we will think about it isn't it it's not just a point for your mains examination it is a point that will worry you now and this is of course it's not more about worried you will be concerned about this thing isn't it from now on so if we have proper data like how much uh, damage is being caused by soil pollution or water pollution and other things if we have these figures then it will create this awareness and it's not just about awareness of people it's about awareness within this decision makers as well and we have to it is very simple uh, to understand and uh, very right as well that our development should be a sustainable development it may look sweet to have double digit uh, numbers of GDP expansion but in a long run it is going to be catastrophic for us with this uh, we reach another article it is about do we need a governor uh, now what happened in this uh, Karnataka case uh, this is again a very interesting fact here uh, let me clarify again that this facts you find in today's article 
on record i'm saying i'm not associated with any political party at all in our country or abroad anyways so vajubhai wala who is uh, governor of uh, karnataka he gave 15 days time and you know what happens in 15 days horse trading ta can take place this is more than enough time required for horse trading now actually bs yadurappa asked for only one week but he was given with another extra week by governor because of bjp his history with bjp this could be one of the reason but supreme court came in stepped in and this was uh, basically rejected by supreme court floor test uh, was uh, uh, declared and we know what happened at present as we are speaking now in today's paper you find this a new chief minister has taken this off uh, in karnataka now vajupai wala also uh, appointed bjp mla kg uh, bopaya now this kg kg bopaya was appointed as pro tem speaker so that this floor test can go on but if we go back in 2011 then we find that this person was castigated by supreme court for being uh, being partial so these are two big red flags and why this sort of things are happening because uh, still this discretion power of governor is in gray area now we find this misuse of raj uh, misuse of uh, raj bhavan uh, not only under this nda government but it has happened in upa government as well so every party that has been in power they have at some point of time used governors to uh, you can say to dictate what they want now if we go back to the history of this thing that we find that uh, here you have two points of history very interesting points for you guys if i'm i'm sure it's going to be a revision for your history in 20th century you know this indian national movements that were going on so gradually we Uh, managed to get this thing from this british rulers that uh, the government of this british raj will become a bit more responsible you know more responsible for uh, towards the citizen of our country because of all this uh, movements uh, we managed to get this thing and this uh, responsibility later on uh, became a law as government of india act 1935 Uh, which established this provincial legislative assemblies uh, remember this type of things you find in your mcq so don't forget this thing that government of india act what it was all about it established this provincial legislative assemblies elected from a limited franchise limited franchise basically means that at that point of time not everyone was eligible to vote if you have property then you can vote and things like that if you are poor no property then you cannot vote so this is how it used to be at that point of time but anyways so they came out with this thing government of india act 1935 now british government was of course it means uh, they came out with this act because of this movements but they want to keep an you can say an upper hand on this whole process so uh, this post of governor was utilized it worked as an eye and ear and uh, any time if a uh, british raj want to implement or enforce something then they will use this raj bhavan office or this post of governor Uh, to throw their dictates now whilst uh, this uh, constituent assembly was going on a very articulate member named kt shah he said that this post is going to be controversial this will eventually be biased because we don't need governor that's what he said because it will be we will find that uh, governors will be at odds with those who are popularly elected by people right this popularly elected ministers uh, this there will be a clash between governor and uh, a people's representative and this is something that we found in this case of karnataka and other cases as well uh, then later on we also find this uh, rohini kumar choudhry she argued that uh, uh, from the first ministry anyone whether he has a big majority or substantial majority right governor can decide who will take oath so this power is again not necessary has been argued by rohini kumar choudhry and uh, this is the thing uh, that we find that governors right uh, it is this flaw in our constitution at that point of time uh, this constituent assembly might have thought that uh, it is a necessary post but now when we see it in 2018 then we find that there are many wrong things uh, means there have been many things uh, that you cannot say they are right or discretionary power is been 
misused many a time. So the best is uh, there should be a debate on this thing that uh, do we really need this post of governor or we can get rid of it altogether. This is about just justice and redemption. Kathwa rape case, Kathwa rape and murder case. Now, justice. What justice means, particularly when you have this small child, right? A victim as a small like parents, of course, they want as speedy a uh, trial and they want to see this uh, justice being delivered as soon as possible. Courts, uh, they will use this uh, process and other things. You will have society uh, that is protesting. And when it comes to small child if you go through cases around the world then one thing that we find is that it is very tough right it is very tough uh, to when you have this uh, uh, when anyone faces this sexual assault in early life then this will stay with that person you know this will haunt that person for a very long period of time there are you might have heard about this platform called TED Talks uh, I heard about a means not heard but I watched a um, a video uh, or a TED talk on uh, on this thing. Uh, there was a lady, and uh, she basically she explained how how when she was child she was abused, uh, sexually abused, and how this thing has haunted her. And st st she is at present brave enough, uh, but then as well she she tells that many a times she she goes through this trauma. And there are many people out there; they do suffer. Uh, even today when they are adult when they are adult enough they have their own kids and they are grandparents but when they have faced this thing when they were child they still go through this phase so it is a very sad of course very heinous thing now what about this justice that we find right every like parents right, as i told you right uh, the parents they want uh, justice the society want to make sure that uh, uh, that this uh, value of deterrence is maintained that no other people will do this sort of things once you identify who the person has done it and if that person is hanged or you know if that person is punished then this thing will work as a deterrence the other thing is value served by justice in such cases resides in the recognition of the child's right as well that we recognize that even a small child right is 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 eligible uh, for for these rights uh, that are not only given by our constitution but also by united nation now the big question here is and this is something that we have to think about that is raising up or you know this uh, looking after security and protection of child is it just the responsibility of of the parents or whether this is a collective responsibility of our society if you ask me then i will say that this is a collective responsibility of our society when society is not looking after our small kids uh, right when we say that uh, if someone is suffering or if someone is going through this a small child is going through this thing then who cares it is their parents duty to look after that then what happens is we are breaking this social contract right uh, we have to remember and understand this thing that as a society if as if someone is raped anywhere in this world then this is a rape on whole humanity a child who is vulnerable a child who cannot protect himself or herself and if this sort of things are going on on this uh, small children or vulnerable group then it is duty of our society first of all we have to create the situation where we don't find this sort of people uh, there are some countries out there and they have this successful uh, successfully they have changed the way things uh, you know they will encourage uh, communities participation if there is any pedophile uh, who has served his term and if uh, that person is out and if that person buys a house or if he rents a house somewhere nearby then the police will inform all this uh, conscious or you know this uh, members of society and they will spread the word around this community will talk about this person that this person out there he has been involved in this sort of crime so make sure you uh, look after your kids so this is how and this sort of things they do work uh, nowadays we find that uh, in whatsapp and in many times in social media as well uh, people do share this sort of uh, unnecessary photos the photos that should not be shared with uh, people because nowadays what happens is uh, many a times you know there are there are pedophiles out there uh, they will misuse uh, uh, this uh, when they have this picture then they will trace this kids and things like that so 
uh, as a society we have to be very careful and uh, death penalty is something that is uh, talked about but if we go through the reports then of course uh, the first thing that we think about is death penalty but it is not working as a deterrence uh, i think there is something wrong uh, with people psychologically something wrong with this people who are doing this sort of things and uh, we need more research on this thing like how we can stop it what are the things what are some of the signs uh, through which we can identify if a person is pedophile moving on to another item this is about why do you process matters now recently we saw this me too campaign uh, remember it's a big thing me too uh, many uh, ladies uh, they came out and they they talked about uh, if they faced any sort of you know harassment or something like sexual harassment and things uh, they shared this thing on a social platform so uh, the positive side is that uh, now this change is coming you know like uh, earlier on it used to be that a uh, woman used to be blamed that uh, if uh, someone is harassing you then something would be wrong with you this was the case but now uh, we do understand this thing generally speaking that it's not uh, this victim it is the person who is doing this sort of wrong things that that person should be blamed and not the victim so because of this thing awareness and other things uh, women came out and they expressed their uh, their experiences uh, what they faced and things like that now the thing is uh, there is a call out there that uh, we should not follow all this due process uh, this due process are lengthy they are uh, not uh, delivering results and things like that but is it uh, really uh, the case of course uh, we know that uh, when you follow this due process then it will take a bit of time you have to go through some pain as well depending on which country and under which judicial system you are living uh, the pain could be higher or lower but uh, if you don't follow due process because due process basically you know it is part of this ideal of rule of law means that all persons in a society are bound by and entitled to equal benefit of laws publicly administered by court so tomorrow this thing can happen with anyone that someone will come out and uh, point finger to you even if you are innocent for whatever reason and uh, then you means imagine that uh, without any due process or rule of law you have to be you uh, you are given with a punishment this is something that is not part of ideal of rule of law L rule should be means there should be proper investigation and then this arguments going on in court and then we can come to a logical conclusion that whether this sort of thing was done or not awareness is a good thing and no doubt but at the same time we cannot ask for rejecting this due process we have to go through this due process for the betterment of all society we have to follow these things right many times we feel that uh, uh, some rules are are lengthy or they are time consuming uh, but if we don't have those rules then we realize that uh, this whole society will be in chaos uh, so this is this article is talking about this thing that we need uh, due process we have to follow due process or else this whole uh, thing right this human right then equality transformative justice everything will fall down because the, it does not work in vacuum it everything is part of this rule of law then you have this uh, picture here uh, you can either see a, a vase here or you can see uh, two faces depends right uh, if you observe this picture then you will see both these things it is called a Rubin's vase and this is an example of visual uh, illusion right uh, same thing happens with uh, auditory illusion as well you have this Yanni and Laurel clip that is going on at present you will find it in YouTube so if the volume is low then you hear the word is Yanni or if the volume is too high then it sounds like laurel just like this thing right are the either you see two faces or you see a vase here so this is how it is and uh, this article this author is saying this this writer is saying that uh, the things that are going on at present right uh, like say for example many times in whatsapp in social networking site and other places uh, you see people sharing their opinion and either you will agree with it or disagree with it based on your own recent experience research is going on on this thing now this may this article may sound a bit you know difficult to understand but i am using as simple language as possible you can observe yourself uh, you know if uh, this rape case is going on 
you know this Kathwa and other cases uh, that's are uh, that are going on and if at this point of time if something pertaining to this woman empowerment come in then of course we will talk about it because this is how our, our mind works because we have recently talked about it we have recently read about it so it is going to be there and uh, it will directly kick in when we go through it so what basically this article is trying to say that this is creating a black and white situation either you are with it or you are against something right this something could be anything on social media whether you are with bjp or against bjp whether you are with congress or against congress and things like that uh, but this all depends on our own personal experience recent experience uh, this is what uh, this article is trying to say and uh, this one more thing that uh, this article is saying is that uh, because of this clear black and white uh, there is no middle ground that where we can s stand in somewhere in between and then we can try to bring this black and white together and things like that so that's everything and uh, now uh, important news item a very strange uh, suggestion from Xi Jinping he has asked Pakistan to relocate half his side to West Asian country uh, one more killing in this Tamil Nadu uh, IMD has said that uh, because of this uh, cyclonic situation in Arabian Sea uh, there will not be any change in monsoon arrival mobile application uh, to be launched in Odisha for for lightning warning uh, I have said this thing that uh, in recently in my special video lecture on this thunderstorm I provided you a point that uh, every one degree increase in temperature increases 12 percent chance of one degree sorry i have just written here percent one degree celsius uh, temperature rise kicks at 12 percent chances of lightning and lightning has killed 61 people uh, between april and may this year itself uh, four civilians killed in pakistan firing in jammu and kashmir india calls uh, india calls uh, pakistani envoy to lodge a complaint polish author olga she got this man booker prize uh, the name of the book is flights and capital uh, remaining for banks is sufficient has been said by government and uh, india is uh, going to wto uh, against uh, us steel tariff uh, can you identify the person that you can see on your screen i think it's not going to be that difficult for you now very interesting picture here uh, your answers i have gone through prabhu ashok incognito and divya's answer and you will find some more points from today's editorial and these are your two questions. Uh, that's everything in today's discussion. Thank you very much, dear friends. Uh, enjoy your day. Uh, keep a smile. Wear a smile. And do share this lecture and hit the like button. Thank you very much. God bless. Jai Hind.